Warning. Ammonia is a poisonous gas, and concentrated ammonia solutions can cause severe chemical burns. If not performed properly, the methods used in this video can lead to an eruption of boiling ammonium hydroxide. I take no responsibility for your use of the following information, and in any attempted recreations, gloves and eye protection must be worn at all times. Ammonium hydroxide is an extremely useful base with many real-world and laboratory applications, including the production of hydrazine, phenol, urea, amino acids, and even in the production of Schweizer's reagent. Unfortunately, obtaining ammonium hydroxide isn't that easy for the amateur chemist, at least not in high concentrations. Most grocery stores sell dilute ammonium hydroxide ranging from anywhere from 1% up to 10% concentration. However, laboratory-grade ammonium hydroxide is usually sold anywhere from 28 to 30 percent concentration. However, increasing the concentration of a dilute ammonium hydroxide solution isn't as easy as it may seem. Simple distillation can't be used as the ammonia will escape from the apparatus and won't end up in the product as desired. In order to solve this problem, I have tried heating a dilute ammonia solution and dissolving the resulting gas in a smaller volume of water. While this does work, it isn't without its problems as ammonia is extremely hydrophilic and will readily dissolve in water as shown here. This results in a negative drop in pressure in the apparatus, which can cause the product to be sucked back into the boiling flask or even cause the dilute ammonium hydroxide solution to flash boil and erupt out of the condenser. This was the fate of the setup shown here, and while it was quite spectacular, I figured there had to be a better and safer way to increase the concentration. And so the solution is one of these guys. So this is a piezo smoke machine or fog machine and essentially the way these things work is they have a little um, piezoelectric transducer in the bottom which vibrates at an extremely high frequency when you plug it in and so what that does is it causes pressure spikes on the surface of the water and if this was the surface of the water it would cause the surface of the water to go up and down really quickly causing pressure spikes now when the pressure goes up really high nothing's going to happen but when the pressure drops down really low you can kind of cause the water to boil essentially on the surface where that negative pressure spike is and it's because the water is going up and down that'll cause the water to essentially vaporize above uh, at the surface of the water. And so the more hand wavy or simpler explanation of that is that it vibrates so fast that it kind of kicks water molecules out of the aqueous phase uh, and into the vapor phase. Uh, and that's a little more hand wavy. The first explanation is a little bit better, but somewhere between those is kind of how it works. But the, the net effect is that you put this in a glass of water and you get uh, a fog above it. So I can demonstrate that really quickly because I already have one plugged in right here. Uh, and ignore the uh, cover on it, that's for later, but yeah, the little cover attached to it's for later, but essentially the general idea is you submerge one of these in water and you apply, I think 24 volts DC it is, uh, or so depending on your model, mine I believe is 24 volts, and then you go ahead and power it on. Uh, and you can see that it will start making fog uh, in the glass there. Yeah, so you can see a nice amount of fog um, on the glass. If I blow on it, it will start missing. So we can it's real quick. Yeah, it makes a nice amount of vapor. And so the way this solves the problem for us is that we want to avoid backflow, but we want the ammonia gas to contact the water. Well, if the water is in a vapor phase and not a liquid aqueous phase, if this backflows, the worst it can do is suck all of this fog out. And I can do that by putting my hand over and kind of pulling it up. And well, the worst it's going to do is suck all that fog out, which means we're not going to get a tremendous backflow of our product, which means we don't have to account for that, which means we can simplify the apparatus significantly just by having a tube kind of come down into it, right around where my finger is here, uh, a little bit over the surface of the water, and that way the ammonia gas will react really nicely with the vapor phase, which has a lot of surface area for contact, but it won't allow it to backflow because it won't actually be past the surface of the water. So for the actual um, thing, we're not going to want to use a container as big as this one, because while it may be more useful, if we blow and it gets a little bit so, sorry about that, the camera. So while this uh, is pretty good for demonstrating it, you're not going to want to use a big container like this 
for your, well, for actually purifying the ammonia. And the reason for this is that we have all this water here, and it would be essentially be taking about a liter of ammonia, ammonium hydroxide, or aqueous ammonia, if you will, and putting it into, well, maybe a half liter. And that's not what we want. So my purifications around, three, or rather, my um, concentration is around 3%. So we're going to want to take that up to 30%, and in order to do that, we're going to need around 100 milliliters of water. So you can see it in here, I have 100 milliliters of water, uh, and so we're going to want a smaller container. So we put 100 milliliters in this container, it wouldn't even cover the top of the transducer, and so we wouldn't get any vapor forming. And so we're going to want to use a smaller container like this. Uh, if you have something with a closed top, it will work fine, um, but what I've done is I've just basically found something about the same width as this so that it covers it nicely um, and then I found a, a little can lid that fits over nicely and it, it doesn't have to be airtight in fact you don't want it to be airtight uh, because we're going to be pumping gas in through the lid here uh, focus come on Give me a second there we go. And we're going to be pumping gas in through the lid here, and if it's airtight, completely airtight, well, we're going to be making the ammonia from a heater, and I'll show you the setup in a second, but we're going to be making it with a heater, and you don't ever want to heat a closed system in chemistry, or anything really, unless you're trying to make it explode, um, because it'll build up pressure, and then the whole system will explode. So we want gas to vent, um, but the idea is we don't want the ammonia to vent, so we don't want it to be just open on top, but we want a little bit for airflow, so that uh, pressure won't build up, but that way the ammonia won't just all vent. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and set up the distillation apparatus, and I'll be right back. Okay, so altogether, the apparatus is really quite simple, a lot more so than my first design. So on the left here, we simply have a boiling flask, which at the bottom has some sand to prevent bumping. Now, if you have a stir, uh, if you have a hot plate that doubles as a stir plate, it would be a lot better. But I don't have one. I just have a stir plate and a hot plate. Uh, not at the same time. I don't have all in one yet. So that's definitely on my list. So another thing to note, which is important about the Erlenmeyer flask here, is that there's room for bubbling. So it's a one liter flask, but I only have around 600 milliliters in it. And as you can see here, it foams up quite a lot. So we want room for that foaming so that it doesn't shoot itself up the condenser. So then above that, uh, as I just said, we have the condenser. So this is to reflux the water so that just the ammonia comes over and that we don't heat up the um, polyethylene tubing because I tried it without the condenser and the tubing got really hot uh, and it just didn't go over that well. And so finally, yeah, we have this tubing which helps to also channel the ammonia into the collection flask, but also to stop backflow. So you can see the vapor kind of jumping up the, jumping up the tubing. So the longer tubing helps to condense that vapor back before it goes into the boiling flask. So finally, we also have an ice bath here because the transducer actually gets kind of warm as well as the dissolution of ammonia is also exothermic so that will get kind of hot so we want to keep it cool so that the ammonia will dissolve nicely. So here we have the results of the distillation. Uh, as we can see here from the density chart we got to around a well we got to a density of 0.933 which correlates to a concentration of around 17 percent which is pretty good now i had to run this twice so the first time i took it up to eight percent and the second time i took it up to 17 percent now both times i had to cut it prematurely due to bumping and foaming so if you had stirring you should be able to take it up to 17 percent or even higher with one go and especially if you're starting with something like 10 percent ammonia instead of the dilute three percent that I had you could really get it pretty close to thirty percent pretty close to lab grade ammonium hydroxide fairly easily using this method but I, I was pretty happy with the seventeen percent I got and I'll probably come back to this uh, when I get a hot plate which doubles as a stir so that I can prevent bumping even better but altogether I thought it went pretty well and I think this is definitely much better over the previous design I had which had two things to catch backflow. The vapor to prevent the backflow was really helpful and made this design a lot more efficient. So hopefully you guys liked it. Uh, this was my first video. I've got some more things planned in the future. Not all chemistry, uh, some electrical stuff, electrical engineering stuff. Uh, one of my coolest things I've ever built should be my next video. So look forward to that. Um, maybe some computer science videos. Uh, yeah, some math stuff perhaps. 
but all together, um, yeah, the, the channel is basically just generally for science stuff, but I hope you liked it as the first video, and I will, I'll link the source to where I got this um, density concentration data in the bottom, but hopefully you guys liked it, uh, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.